Today, old games are about to get way better. New Frankenstein NVIDIA GPUs, AMD kept their word and say goodbye to multi-threading in CPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Mode. First up for today, NVIDIA just released their RTX Remix software in open beta. For those who don't know, RTX Remix is a free modding platform that allows modders to easily remaster select DX8 and DX9 games by adding things like ray tracing, DLSS, and more. And it's now officially in open beta on NVIDIA's website for every modder to try out. NVIDIA actually announced this a little while back, and while they've done some work with it, this is a pretty big day. Some of your favorite old games could soon be getting a fresh new coat of paint. Not only that, but it's obviously a 4D chess move by NVIDIA, because it would allow modders to remake their favorite games and let gamers play those games if you have NVIDIA's hardware. So it's definitely not a bad move for them, and it will be interesting to see what kind of games that come out of this. Time will tell if it ends up being a really big thing. Next up for today, new Frankenstein NVIDIA GPUs are being sold. But before I get to that, it finally happened. The power of AI has not just been brought to your phone, but to your keyboard. It's called Type AI, and while they sponsored today's video, I flat have to say that it's a game changer. Powered by ChatGPT's API, Type AI is a keyboard extension app that lives in your keyboard, which means it can do things like take whatever you're writing and finish it for you. Don't like how something sounds? You can have Type AI completely change the tone, and I really love this one. It can generate automatic replies for messages or emails, and what's wild is that it can look at the context and send a very real and genuine in reply. Want to sound professional in a business email? Type AI has you covered. It can even translate your text right in the keyboard. And the best part is that you don't have to copy and paste it. Just apply it directly to whatever you're doing. And it works seamlessly in all your apps. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to get a free trial of Type AI Premium today. Once again, click that link in the description to make your life easier today. Now back to the story, some new GPUs have been coming out of China that are really weird. Basically, companies have begun taking mobile GPUs, throwing them on PCBs, putting some fans over it, and marketing them as desktop cards. As you can see, there are numerous listings for 4080Ms, a 4090M, etc. And this obviously comes with some major issues, like driver support, the fact that their mobile cards max out at 175 watts, potential warranty concerns, and the list goes on. Don't get me wrong, the cards can be a little cheaper than typical desktop GPUs, though nothing huge really. The 4090 is actually more expensive than the regular 4090. The simple fact is that these aren't official in any way. Nvidia doesn't endorse them or anything like that, but they are still getting the cards somehow. And surprisingly, Nvidia hasn't done anything about them yet, but ultimately, I'd say to approach these with caution and probably just stay clear of them altogether. Next up, AMD actually kept their word. Well, sort of. If you've been following the channel, you know that when AMD announced their Ryzen 8040 mobile processors, as well as their 8000G series APUs, they announced a few hybrid core parts, meaning they come with both Zen 4 and Zen 4C cores. The issue was that in neither of those press releases did they give us clock speeds on the little Zen 4C cores, instead just showing the boost clock of the Zen 4 cores. They're also not very clear in most of their documentation that any of the processors have hybrid cores. These are the 85 40U and 8440U on notebooks, and the 8500G and 8300G for their desktop APUs. What's wild is that even when you go to their spec page, it doesn't make this clear. You literally have to click see full specifications to actually see the different cores. But as you can see here, it still didn't give the clocks for the little cores. It was just the base and boost of the big cores. Luckily, about a month ago, AMD promised to add those clocks in. And as you can see right here, they have. Though as far as I can see, no one pointed out that they still don't show Zen 4C clocks on the Z1 chip, so AMD get to it. And that's also not the only issue. While AMD did add the clocks, they still don't show any of that on the chip's main spec page. You have to click see full specifications to even know that it comes with Zen 4C cores. And because AMD's little cores still have multi-threading, it's really tough to see if there is little cores. So yeah, I still think AMD has more work to do, but in the meantime, we do have the core clocks for their 8000G desktop APUs. Specifically, the 8300G comes with the Zen 4C base clock of 
of 3.2 GHz and a max boost of 3.6 GHz, and the 8500G comes with the same base clock but 3.7 GHz boost. Ultimately, it's great that AMD finally added this, but I definitely think there's more work for them to do. And lastly for today, it's time to say goodbye to multi-threading in CPUs. That's right, a feature in hardware that's over two decades old is on its way out. This story originally comes from a new report by Tech Power Up, who noticed in a recently leaked document for Intel's 15th gen Arrow Lake that it didn't include hyper-threading, which is Intel's branding for their multi-threading. And this was actually rumored months ago, so it's really looking true. Now, you might be scratching your head as to why. While simultaneous multi-threading, or SMT, has introduced some major headaches for both AMD and Intel and bring some pretty decent performance to heavily threaded workloads. Well, the reason actually boils down to Intel's hybrid core architecture. See, in multi-threading, the CPU cores are split up into two logical cores, and your PC can't tell the difference between the real and logical core. The reason for this is because different tasks take different amounts of time to complete, so there is a lot of downtime for CPU cores while waiting for other cores to finish. As you can see in this great analogy, before SMT, you had one funnel pushing tasks to each core, but there's some time between each task. With multi-threading, each core is still doing one task at a time, but it adds a second funnel to fill the time between the two tasks of the first, effectively making double the performance. But that never happens perfectly like that because it only works if there's enough downtime to do the new thread's task and if the completion time of the new thread perfectly matches that downtime, which obviously never happens. But you do get more performance. In comes hybrid core architecture that makes this way more complicated. Now you have one core that's way more powerful than the other. So Intel has designed a solution, and they already have a patent on it. It's called Rentable Units, and it basically takes a task and splits it into two, then hands those new tasks to the best core for the job, meaning the bigger task goes to the performance core with the smaller task to the efficiency core. And the goal is to try and time it so they finish as close to the same time as possible. Basically, this is a very interesting new take on the utilization problem with multi-core processing. And given AMD looks to be moving to hybrid cores as well, we can assume they plan to do do a similar version of this, which means multi-threading in CPUs is reaching its end. So while that does it for today, what do you think about the end of multi-threading? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to download Type AI and save some money down in the description below. And as always, have a great day!